dude, what are you doing? Oh, well, you know, just like you guys, before I do this show, I also have a pretty sophisticated pre-shot routine. You cannot have excellence unless you're in your routine. So that's just exactly what I was doing. I was just kind of getting in my zone. I agree, but at what point are you going to zip up your fly? Oh, darn it. God, don't you got a show to do? Oh, live show? No script? What could possibly go wrong? GA Week crowd. It's a champions crowd. Thanks for being here. You know that earlier this week we had uh, Lydia Ko. I guess that was last night. Tonight is Morgan Pressel. It's our LPJ Champions Week. We also have a lot of friends that are uh, in the LPJ office. And um, one of the things where I'm out of breath. Did you guys see me run up? Woo. All right, let's take a second here. Okay. One of the things that uh, that we we're excited about having here is because we really love the things the LPGA is doing with their marketing. They've, they're the very best on social. And we kind of snuck in and took a look at some of the stuff they're doing in marketing. And you guys know their current um, marketing campaign is LPGA See Why It's Different, correct? You guys know this, right? So we looked at some of the ones that they actually didn't end up using for their campaign. So here's, here's one that we saw that is, they did not do this old one. It says, LPJ, we know you just won the third flight of your member guests, but these girls can still easily beat you. <laughs> he did not use that one at all. Here's the next one. LPJ, the best female golfers on the planet and lots of selfies. <laughs> they did not use that one. Probably because that was a really lame joke. All right, the last one. LPJ, more major champions every year than on the PGA Tour. Because they have five majors and the PGA Tour only has four. In your, pay, in your face, PGA Tour. <laughs> Stepped all over those lame jokes. I'll tell you what will not be lame. Stick around because we're going to be right back and Morgan Pressel is going to be here. So stay where you are. around 200. The only difference between me and Happy Gilmore is I can skate a whole lot better than he can. This is the first time I've ever been to a range where the guys didn't really care if we hit anyone. Go! Right in the center. I'm confirming ball number two at 427. tonight we've known her forever it seems she played in the u.s open when she was 12 years old which at the time was the youngest that anybody ever played in the u.s open she won the u.s am she was the youngest major championship winner when she won the a a inspiration out in the desert she is now into her 11th season on the lpj tour that makes me feel old i don't know about you guys please say hello to our good friend morgan pressel there she is Selfie. Can you use selfies? I think that was our first Callaway Live selfie. Uh, maybe it was. That's you know, just nice. like you said, LPGA CY with the selfies. I mean, it's, you know, we got to I'm shocked we that you guys didn't selfie. go with that one. It's a good thing that you have. Aren't we giving away a driver or something? Did I hear about that? Yeah. Where's our driver? Oh my goodness. Oh, we're giving Where away driver a driver go? today. Hold on, I gotta go get it. Oh, okay. She'll be right back. So let me tell you this joke while she's gone. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> So we're giving this driver away on Snapchat. For those of you who have followed my very, very exciting day on Callaway Snaps on Snapchat, uh, after the show, we'll be giving away this XR16 driver. All right, so, so follow us on Callaway Snap. And is that your actual driver? What are you going to play with this week? This is not my actual okay, driver, good. but it is the same driver that I play. So. Nice. Close facsimile thereof. Yes. All right, so it's right there. I can't believe it when, well, we were talking before, and I said, so this is sort of like your 10th full season. You're like, it's actually my 11th season. 
And I said, well, the first season, I don't really count because you were running back and forth taking, like, high school exams and stuff. But 11 years on the LPJ Tour. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, like you said, the first year, I, the, my last semester of my senior year was really when I turned pro and when I started playing. I think I, of 18 weeks of school, I think I missed maybe nine. <laughs> but I still graduated and got my di high school diploma and everything. But I did not go to college and, and turned pro. Went on the LPJ. What team, a so. failure. No college for you. No college. Totally uneducated. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Totally uneducated. Sorry, kids, don't listen to me, okay? <laughs> I have been with you, though, and I know that you still get carded, so you still look very young. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. That's very So, kind. 11 years on tour. What's changed for you as now? I always think it's funny because you're like this grizzled veteran on the LPJ tour, and you're still in your, just your late 20s. Yeah, it's it's... The tours come full circle. I think in the last 11 years, it's it's been ex we've had. I personally, I've had very exciting times and very challenging times, and and everything in between. And uh, it's been fun to watch the tour grow, to watch it blossom, to go from really where we had 23 events to now being very healthy at 33, 34 events, and had a lot of fun on Solheim Cups. Been able to win a couple times. Oh, and, nice job. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's nice. It's a lot of fun, and um, I get to live my dream uh, and make a living doing it. So. Do you feel like your your playing years are like older than you are on tour? Because I always think of you as someone that gets every ounce out of your game to compete at the highest level, from you know revving really high with emotions to really having to think better than anyone because they're just because of your stature and how far you hit it you really have to have it your very best every single week I, I mean that's the goal right is to have your best every single week and uh, thanks for not hitting me when I <laughs> asked you that by the way I, that's the constant <laughs> challenge right is working on I mean if you work too much on one part of your game you know maybe your putting starts to struggle because you're working on a swing change or you know your chipping isn't as great because you're hitting a lot of greens and you don't get to practice it that often and, and it's just the constant balance of how do I continue to improve every round, every day. Um, just get that little bit better. That's that's why I'm out there. So you have a plan going into each year of what you want to work on, how you're going to get better, and then kind of map that out over the course of a year? How does that work? Um, not exactly. I feel like I take it more, I don't want to say daily, but I have my you know, my plan that I'm working on in the short term. And there are bumps along the way that you hit and different things that you have to adjust for that. But um, I don't know. I, I address it every, you know, when I really start to struggle, maybe you take a look back and say, what do I really need to work on? Am I working on the right thing? Do I, do I need to move forward from here? Or, or, hey, you know what? It's really tough, but I absolutely know that this is the right thing and this is the direction that I need to go in and I'm going to come out better because of it. Well, because you're pretty detail-oriented, I know, being around you a little bit. And kind of a perfectionist. Just a little. So those things don't really work all the time when you're trying to take a long view of, of trying to accomplish, like, long-term goals. No, for sure. You should talk to my coach. <laughs> <laughs> he, he hates that. Uh, that quality in me is that I do want to see it. I want to look, see it look perfect on video. I want to see perfect shots. I want to, and that's just not golf. Golf perfection is not attainable. So um, I, I have to work really hard to temper my expectations and to make sure that I keep myself on track. And, and so. But coming off a really great year last year, I mean, that was, it was maybe funny to you because a lot of people were like, hey, Morgan's back. She's back as if you went anywhere. But a really solid year last year. And then what do you do now to build on that this year? Yeah, I really struggled a couple years ago with my wrist. And that kind of, I, I fell off a little bit in that sense. I couldn't practice as much. But once I got back to being able to practice a lot and, and my wrist was health, my body was healthy, um, I really, I certainly played well. Probably started with a little bit lower expectations, which always helps. And then, and then grew from there. This year, higher expectations and having played well last year. But um, just keep grinding. I mean, every day is a new challenge. Um, I, I love what I do. I love playing golf. Um, I love playing on the LPJ Tour against the best players in the world. And I don't know. I just, and they're getting younger and younger, aren't they? I, I, I think I'm just getting older and older. But they're also getting younger and younger. It's a little bit of both. Well, that's like Matthew McConaughey. I, I get older and they stay the same age, right? <laughs> but... No days of confused fans here? A little bit too young for the kids around here. Yeah, I know. I become my dad when I'm dropping pop culture references from like 20 years ago, and then there's no one ever says anything about it. But do you... Do you I, didn't, I didn't say anything. I know. Either. I saw it. Thank you very much for that. You're very nice. Do you find yourself, when you go on the range, like just seeing all these new kids that 
are out there and just have perfect golf swings or do you try to like block all that out and stay in your own little zone? I try and block most of it out. I mean, I, I kind of, I have my own thing that I do and I am I have a busy day and and sometimes you you just really can't get distracted by what's going on around you. This these it's always funny the first couple weeks of the year cuz you see a lot of new faces in the rookies and you know, there's probably 20 or so rookies out here. Um, and it's who's that? I've never seen them before. Do you keep you around kind of, like a yearbook or anything? You're no, like you, flipping through? you kind of try and sneak a look at the bag <laughs> yeah, yeah. and see if you can hey, see who it is. Uh, Jane, how you doing? <laughs> exactly. But um, that's really that's when I feel the most old is when I've been on tour a long time. I know 80%, 90% of the people that I comp I'm competing against, but all of a sudden there's new faces and, you know, where'd they come from? Who are they? And you try and learn a little bit about them and, and make them feel welcome on tour. It's, it's not it's not easy to be a rookie, but um, they seem to do a pretty good job. And when you're asking, like, some of the young rookies out, if you want, they want to go to dinner and they say, yeah, and you say, where do you want to go? And, like, how about Chuck E. Cheese? Like, that's got to make you feel old. <laughs> I haven't gotten that one yet, but maybe I'll ask a few rookies this week and you see should. what they Take say. Them out. All right, don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back with more Morgan Pressel right after this. I was living in Dallas, and my wife asked me, would you help Adam Levine? Because one of her friends was friends with Adam, and he called him up, hey, you know, Adam's playing in, in Dallas, would you help him? And I'm like, she said, you gotta help him, you gotta help him, you gotta help him, it's Adam Levine. And I'm like, okay, 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 I'll give him a lesson. So we, I gave him a lesson, and like the first day, I'm like, wow, you know. <laughs> He's into it. This guy's, this guy's got a long way to go. Oh man, I never, I never in my life, no, never I swung a golf club. And yeah. I, it was like this. And but a really athletic guy, I mean, you had to feel like you had something to work first, with. It wasn't yeah. like the first yeah. time you saw me swing. Well, I mean, I'm not so point. sure he felt that way at, at first. <laughs> I did, actually, I didn't feel that way at first, but then we went to his concert that night, and I saw him on stage, and I'm like, oh my God, I mean, this this guy's an athlete. I mean, because if you've seen him in concert, I mean, he just. Yeah, he you know, can, Baron Davis scored move. 60 on him once, right? <laughs> <laughs> you really had to bring that up. Yeah, again. sorry about that. <laughs> on the show next week, which you saw there. It's kind of a pink theme. You're wearing the pink blazer. He had the pink hair um, for next week. He must have gotten the medal. It's very nice. Speaking of pink, your foundation is one of the things that, when I think of you, I think of the amazing things that you're doing with golf to raise money for your foundation. Tell us a little bit about how that got started. Yeah, um, well, it started when my mother passed away uh, when I was 15 years old. So uh, I feel very fortunate when I played in the Open when I was 12, 13 at Pine Needle, she was there. And that's very special to me that she was able to see me play on the biggest stage. But um, she passed away from breast cancer when I was 15. And it was kind of at that moment, I wanted to do something. I didn't know what, I didn't know how. Um, but then a few years later, I was, made it to the LPGA Tour and had turned pro. And it kind of gave me a platform. It gave me, I always say, it gave me a megaphone. I got the media's attention and, and um, even a lot of people at home. And, and we kind of said, hey, let's try and start something so we came up with a golf tournament and um, it's now this year will be our 10th year this January this coming January and to date we've raised over five million dollars and uh, wow. it's really thank you it's, it's, um, it's really incredible and, and I mean the majority uh, of the support for my event comes from the community where I live in St. Andrews Country Club and they are just it's it's unbelievable the event continues to grow that this past year we raised over one million dollars in a single event which was the biggest by far and uh, I, I don't even know where we go from here but we've done a lot of really great things in our community through the foundation um, we have a, the Catherine Kirkstein Pressel Mama van named in honor of my mother that travels around uh, Palm Beach County um, offering Mama vans to those who are scared or intimidated or, or can't afford to go to the hospital um, and then we have a new center for cancer genetics, which is kind of the, at the forefront of um, fighting cancer, as well as a drug research program with the um, University of Miami Hospital, Sylvester Cancer Center. So between Boca Raton Regional with the other two and Sylvester Cancer Center, we're uh, focused in South Florida, but uh, 
you never know. We've got a long way to go. Yeah, We'd love to so, grow. and just sounds like just getting started too, which is which is outstanding. It's it's definitely my passion, and I love to play golf. But uh, I mean, people say, what do you do during the off season? I don't have an off season. <laughs> I, I mean, even the last couple months of the LPGA season, I transition right into how do we prepare for the event and get everything ready, and then because it's usually the first or second week of January. So all of December, all of the holiday season is spent focusing on the event. And then right after the event, it's okay, I got three weeks. Let's cram for the season. You know, let's get ready to go. So. Well, Lydia was on the show last night. She shocked me. Her horizon, she's thinking she's only going to play till she's 30 right now. So, I mean, that's not that far away, that sort of time. What Do you think about life after golf? I was going to say, let's ask Lydia when she's 30. How she feels. <laughs> It's, it's My mom of, finally kicked me out of the basement when I was 30, so I was like, I don't even understand how. <laughs> it's kind of the thing, like, you know, people ask, when are you going to have children? And uh, I've talked to a couple other players about this, too. And, you know, in a couple of years and, you know, when I'm 30 or whatever, and, and my one friend said, well, 30 came and I wasn't ready. It was like I had always said 30, 30. And um, I don't know. Um, Life after golf, obviously, I would love to focus on my foundation and grow there. Maybe potentially TV. I did a little bit with Fox Sports yeah. last year and, and really enjoyed that, covering the men's open. Um, I know I know, I know. know Mike Wan is doing a great job, and he's just been a, a huge inspiration for us here from what he's been able to do to build the brand and everything. Would you ever want to be commissioner? <laughs> I don't know. Now that I sit in board meetings with him, I don't know that I can handle that job. <laughs> That's a little much for me. To but... deal with people like you, you mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Listen to me complain. I don't know. <laughs> I thought one of the things I, I know for a fact you could do, I don't know if this is in your interest or not, but about a year ago, you started posting a lot of your pictures on uh, Instagram and social of a lot of the yoga that you're doing. And mm -hmm. I was like, wow, I can't believe how much, how great she, she can do all these poses like this. And I think I told you that it really inspired <laughs> me to sort of get involved in yoga as well. Oh boy. And, uh, yeah, and, and you've really encouraged me. Oh no. So here, yeah, here's the. Uh, <laughs> so I wanted to kind of show you some of the, uh, the poses. That is some and, impressive photo yeah, we named right yeah. there. No, that's all legit. <laughs> It's all legit. <laughs> so here's uh, here's some some poses that I did. This one. Oh my goodness. Do you know what this one's Look called? Look at your face. I know. That's got to be the chrome soft. Well, that is yes, exactly. That's this. our chrome soft pose. Look at that. There oh. it goes. Yeah. There's a chrome soft. Are we soft using pose. that in the new advertising campaigns? Only or? if we never want to sell another golf ball ever again. <laughs> so here's another here's another uh, pose that uh, I've been perfecting right here. There's there you go. Wow. You know what that one is? Wow, I, I don't even know yeah. what that one is. That one's the XR pose, of course. Oh, the yeah. XR, oh, okay. Absolutely. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Is I, there, is can, everybody, you, can we do uh, that right now? Yeah, I'd really like to see out? you get into that right now. I can't. I, I hurt my back earlier today. <laughs> That's um, such a cop out. I was on the phone. Um, <laughs> is everybody creeped out yet? Or you guys want to be creeped out a little more? Okay, good. Here's another one. There we go. That was when I had my long hair. You go there. You know what that one is? Any well, idea? <laughs> no, I have no idea. That's the Bertha. Oh, the Bertha. Oh, that's the Apex. I'm hey, sorry. You don't even know I, the names it's, of your it's, own poses. I forgot the, the Bertha goes the other way. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the Apex. Then here's, uh, here's the next one. I bet you can figure out what this one is. I guess this is the Bertha, one. the <laughs> yeah, next exactly. one. exactly. Oh. Oh, wow. There you go. Oh, man. That was we actually... Maybe he that needs was a actually wax. Very I'm painful. not sure. Look at that. It's hard to get your own knee out of your ear. That's a big Bertha. <laughs> One, and favorite one since this product just, product just launched. Anyone know what this one is? Anyone? 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 Oh my goodness. Toe up, exactly. There's a toe up. Oh. Yeah. I like the tattoos. Yeah, those are those are freshy tattoos. Those, I like I'm those. I'm not sure what those are. Are those the temporary ones? Can you I'm get those off quickly? grossed out by myself. Yes, I hope so. <laughs> and then the last one, thank God. This well, one. There's more. There we go. Oh my God, there's more. There we go. Look how happy I am there. Wow. That's the MB3 <laughs> mail. Yes. <laughs> Yes. It took a whole team of people to come help me get out of that pose. There we are. So, that, yeah, I told you that was it. <laughs> Thank you. That was a pity laugh. I love that. I like that. That's my favorite. Oh, yeah, 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 That's my favorite. So what, what's the year looking like for you? What do you, I mean, what kind of big goals do you have for the year? I know that you're, you're someone I always think your game is so geared for the hardest venues where driving the golf ball is at a premium and getting up and down from crazy spots is at a premium. So you got to be licking your chops at, at uh, this year, don't you? I, 
I definitely love difficult golf courses. I think they challenge the best players. Um, I'm never a player who's gone out and made a bazillion birdies around, but I can grind it out with the best of them. So I do love tough venues, especially majors. I always have geared my season around majors. This year, I have a very difficult stretch, though, with the way the season is for the Olympics, the way our season is um, has been changed, and I have to play. I'm, I'm going to play. I don't have to. I chose five tournaments in a row, with the first being a major and the last being a major. So that'll be five weeks. That'll be challenging, and I'll have to. It'll be a challenge for me to budget my time properly and to make sure that I'm not tired come the U.S. Open, which is the last in that stretch. So. How do you take care of yourself during that stretch? Because staying healthy is probably a major part of that. For sure. And I have a uh, great physio um, that travels with me and a few other girls. And, I can show you some poses if you and, need it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you might need her help after you <laughs> yeah, get exactly. into those poses. But Haley's the best. And uh, I'm. she's really helped me I come through my wrist injury and everything like that and, and keep me healthy. And uh, like you said, when you play, that much in a row it is challenging I may take every Monday off I don't know it might be that sort of a thing to give my body a rest and uh, just like hashtag Chad here at, at Callaway <laughs> I think he takes every day off. every Monday and every Friday <laughs> and sometimes Wednesdays <laughs> well I know it seems like every time we see these major championships and now the Olympics that's six big events this year and then obviously the Solheim Cup seems like every year we see at the top of the leaderboard I know that's going to be the same for this year and uh, you know that so. we couldn't find bigger fans of yours than those of us here at Callaway and in this room so we want to thank you for for being here tonight. Thank you. Thanks. All right, that, right, that's Morgan Pressel. <laughs> Next week Adam Levine from the Forum. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, bud. That was fun. We're famous, right? Yeah. Good. Yeah.